I recently made an M2 MacBook Air for programming review video and a lot of you have been asking if you should get the Pro or the Air, so I decided to make an M2 MacBook Pro for programming video. As always, I want to start by specifying that this is the base M2 MacBook Pro with 8-core GPU, 256GB SSD and 8GB of RAM. Because this is a MacBook, I have to start the programming test with Xcode. Xcode itself runs very smoothly and I have not experienced any issues thus far. First thing I did on Xcode was run one of my iOS projects to compare with the M2 Air and the results were astonishing. The M2 MacBook Pro built and ran the project in an average of 15 seconds, while the M2 Air did it in an average of 30 seconds. This is half the time. A great success! Although there was clearly better performance over the M2 Air, I wanted to run the Xcode benchmark as well to compare with other popular Apple computers. Xcode benchmark is a more accurate way of testing performance as it is a large codebase that includes 42 popular CocoaPods libraries and 70 plus dependencies in total. As per the instructions, I turned off the Wi-Fi, disabled all software running at startup, updated the battery settings, and rebooted the MacBook. Now with the MacBook plugged in, I ran the test. The build time of 116 seconds was faster than the build time of 130 seconds that I got with the M2 Air. This puts the 13-inch M2 MacBook Pro between the 14-inch M1 MacBook Pro and M2 MacBook Air. Based on this test, the M2 Pro might be slightly better than the M2 Air. This could potentially be due to the thermal throttling of the M2 Air. Now on to web development. The M2 MacBook Pro has no problem running VS Code as it is very lightweight. Just like with the M2 Air review, I ran the speedometer browser benchmark which measures the responsiveness of web applications. This benchmark uses demo web applications to simulate user actions such as adding to-do items. The M2 MacBook Pro got a score of 348 runs per minute. This is close to the 343 runs per minute I got on the M2 Air. This means that for web development, you might not notice much difference between the M2 Air and the M2 Pro. This could not be a programming review in 2022 without doing some Python and artificial intelligence tests. I like to start with the Python Mandelbrot algorithm as it stresses the CPU to test how powerful it is. The M2 MacBook Pro ran this program in 1 minute and 33 seconds. This is only 8 seconds faster than the M2 Air which ran it in 1 minute and 41 seconds. The second test is AI Benchmark Alpha, an open source Python library for evaluating AI performance of various platforms including CPUs, GPUs and TPUs. The tests cover all major deep learning tasks and architectures making it useful for researchers, developers and anyone running AI applications on their devices. Although this test is better suited for more powerful desktop computers, I wanted to compare the results with my M2 MacBook Air. The M2 MacBook Pro achieved a device AI score of 231. This is about the same as the M2 Air which had a score of 235. I then went ahead and set up the Anaconda environment in order to run an autoencoder from TensorFlow. The autoencoder ran with 10 input images and it took the neural network 1 minute and 12 seconds to reconstruct these images. This is almost identical to the M2 Air's runtime of 1 minute and 13 seconds. I know some people have been worrying about the reported slow SSD speeds on the M2 Pro, so I wanted to test that as well. As you can see from the speed test, I was consistently getting write speeds between 1500 and 1600 megabytes per second and read speeds of around 1470 megabytes per second. This is slower than the 10 core GPU M2 Air, which gave me write speeds of around 2300 megabytes per second and read speeds of around 2800 megabytes per second. Just like its M1 predecessor and the M2 Air, the M2 MacBook Pro only supports one external monitor. This means that if you really want dual external monitor support, you will have to look for the higher end 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pro models. 
To conclude, based on the benchmark results and my time using the M2 MacBook Pro, I can say that it is a pretty good laptop for programming, but not significantly better than the M2 Air. I think the deciding factor between the two might be that the Pro has a fan so you won't experience the same thermal throttling as with the M2 Air. I'll leave you with that and hope to see you in the next video.